Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you. We praise you for your most holy word. We thank you that your word will go forth this morning under the anointing and teaching and preaching of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, rise up extra big within me. Speak through my lips. Think through my mind. Let the word go forth boldly, accurately, uncompromisingly with power and love. And let it minister to all the needs of the people. I thank you and praise you, Father, my preaching and teaching is not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power so that their faith should rest not in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. We ask for understanding of the scriptures that you clearly reveal to us the things you would have for us this day, that the name of Jesus be glorified and magnified and that the word of God have free course. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the head of the church, Satan, we bind you. We break your power. Every foul, wicked, unclean spirit, every work of darkness in Jesus' name, go from this place right now. We lose right now the power, the anointing, the Holy Spirit. We lose the ministering angels, the love, the peace, the joy of the Lord in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's open our Bibles to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, as we look into the Word of God. Can you say amen? And we've been teaching on the waiting on the Lord, waiting on the Lord. And some may say, but why do we keep going on waiting on the Lord? Well, it's very simple because everything we do, we are to wait on the Lord. And this is where you have to learn how to wait on the Lord. Very, very important because sometimes people jump ahead of God. Sometimes people get so far behind God, but you and I are to walk with God, the Holy Spirit leading us. We have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us and he guides us into all truth. And the Lord tells you and I that he is our shepherd and he leads us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake, that he instructs us and teaches us in the way to go. So you need to understand in your Christian uh, life that waiting on the Lord is something that you're going to do. God may call you to the ministry, but you must wait on the Lord so God can develop you in that particular ministry. God may have something for you to do. He may have for like the prayer mountain in Malaysia. God spoke that to me and about seven years later, we went about doing it. That long. Seven years. When he told us, we didn't go straight away and do it. Because we have to wait on him. We have to get his timing. We have to get his direction. I had a number of people offer certain places to us. But it wasn't the right timing. Are you all following what I'm saying? This is where you have to understand purposes, times, and seasons. These things will help you. Can you say amen? amen. And then finally, God had us to go about it. We watched him put it together. Not us, but he put it together. Can you say amen? And we were just getting ready to build on the other side of the road. And God put a halt to that. He put a halt to it. Well, see, this is where you have to know when something is God and something that is not a God. Amen. Sometimes you find yourself kicking against the pricks. And that just simply means that it's not God that's halting you. It's, excuse me, it's not the devil that's stopping you is God is halting you sometimes. And this is where you have to get perfect timing. Can you say amen? And God halted us. Why? Well, God knew that there would be COVID-19. <laughs> Nobody could work. Nobody could go to, to, to work and things of that particular nature. There was a lockdown. So there's a whole lot of things. Uh, God calls you to sing. Sure, you have a voice, but he has to develop your voice God's way. Amen. You all follow what I'm saying. Amen. Amen. You are called to preach. 
It takes time. Amen. You have to wait on God's timing. Can you say amen? amen? Now, when you wait, that doesn't mean you're not doing something. With some people, waiting is, oh, well, I'll just lay here and sleep till God tells me to get up and go. No, <laughs> that's not it. Waiting is doing what you've been doing. But first, I better let you know what you should be doing if you're not doing, okay? Waiting means, keep your finger in Mark chapter 16 a moment. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 16. Number one, you go and preach the gospel in verse 15. Amen. Proclaim the gospel. This is where you need to know what the gospel says. See, some people go out and they preach church. You don't go out and preach in church. Church. I have a saying is that ministers, ministries, and churches pass away, but the Lord is forever. Amen. Okay. And people go out sometimes and they just preach church, preach church, preach church. Come to our church. We got some good fried chicken in our church. And boy, we got some sisters who can really cook, you know. <laughs> no. <laughs> preach Jesus Christ. Amen. Understand what happened to mankind. Why is there a need for people to get saved? You have some very moral people, moralistic people. And they're more moral than many Christians are. Okay, they won't cheat you. They won't stab you in the back. They won't do things to you like that. They're just nice people, if you follow what I'm saying. But they've never received the Lord. And it's receiving the Lord that causes us to go to heaven. Amen. You know, one of the things I notice, you can just look at certain programs in the world. Everybody wants to go to heaven. I haven't seen a program where someone wants to go to hell. Okay. They'll talk about different people. That, well, he's up there now. She's up there now. They're up there now. And that's good. But you need to know that you will be up there. Amen. Not just saying, not just guessing. Are you all following what I'm saying? You have Jesus Christ. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. All of us was lost at one time. And all of us needed to be saved. And when we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, God raised him from the dead, we got saved and heaven is our home. So people really need to know that they know that they know that's where you're going to go when it's time to go. But don't go before your time. Amen. Okay, don't check out and, and say, no, I'm, I'm going to end this. No, your life is precious. Amen. Did you know that? Yes. Did you know your life is precious? Yes. The Lord lets us know that he takes care of the birds of the air. Yes. He feeds them. And he says to us, your life is more valuable. <laughs> Value yourself. The reason why you don't want to value yourself, a person doesn't want to value themselves, is because they don't think much about themselves. They think that they're a failure. There's no use going on. Sometimes people commit suicide. Don't commit suicide. Hello. Hello. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? Don't end your life. Your life is precious. God has things for you, far more exceedingly abundant above all you can ask or think. But... You need to know that you are of a value, great value, great value. Jesus died for you. He died for me. And the reason why people don't value themselves is because they've been taught that by the way of the world. And sometimes religion has taught them that. Sometimes religion has taught people there's a difference between religion and life. He who has the son has life, life, eternal life. The reason why people believe that that's been that's been taught, that's been preached. We're just little little worms squirming in the dirt. 
We have no really value to God. We're just old sinners saved by grace. Well, you're no longer a sinner. You've been saved by grace. You're a child of God. You are a son of God. As many as received him, gave them the right and privilege to become the sons of God. I remember years ago, we were in a restaurant and we were in a restaurant in what you call a red light district. That's not where there's flashing red lights. <laughs> but there's all kind of things going on there. And there was this one particular guy. OK. And I think he was cross dressing or something of that particular nature. And Jerry James went up to him and said to him, you know, Jesus loves you. You know what the person said? I don't think anybody could love me. I don't think anybody could love me. In other words, in his own eyes, he was not worthy to be loved. He felt worthless. He did not value himself. People are like that. You find that when you go out on the streets. Sometimes you could find it in church where a person comes every week, sits in a seat or in a pew, but they don't value themselves. They consider themselves unworthy, worthless. Those are all lies of the devil. Amen. That's not God. You see, when you receive Jesus, you and I are made worthy. That's an insult to tell God you're not worthy because he's made you and I worthy. That's why in Hebrews 4, 16, it says, let us come boldly, fearlessly before the throne of grace. Throne of grace is a throne of favor. You and I have favor with God. Can you say amen? amen. That we may find mercy and help in time of need. If you are in trouble, don't run from the Lord, run to the Lord. Amen. And you don't have to get into a long religious prayer. Just say, help, Jesus. That's all you got to say. And he hears you because you are the righteous. And his ears are open to the prayers of the righteous. He hears us. I don't know why I'm getting this this morning, but praise God, this is what the Lord wants us to understand. Can you say amen? amen? And maybe the things that you're going through right now seem overwhelming to you, but they're not. Got quiet on me on that. <laughs> the Bible calls it light affliction. Sometimes that light affliction can be a person. Pray God or knock him in the head. <laughs> He knows how to straighten people out. Can you say amen? amen? amen. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. God is good. But we're talking about waiting. Go preach the gospel. Find out what the gospel is. But you find the gospel in a nutshell in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Keep your finger here a moment. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. See, gospel means good news. Sometimes when Christians preach to you, it's not good news. <laughs> it's terrible news. Okay. Second Corinthians chapter five. And this is the gospel in a nutshell. And this is why you need to go over this one over and over and over and over again. I never had anyone preach the gospel to me. They preached church to me. They preach guilt and condemnation to me, but they never preach the gospel to me. It was only because of the Holy Ghost being led and getting saved and filled with the, with the Holy Ghost. God did it because the place I went to, they preached a lot of guilt and condemnation that I went to. I'm talking about for that one particular night. I went back later on and they had a whole lot of guilt and condemnation. 
you get saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, and you come back two weeks later, they'd ask you, are you still saved? <laughs> I'm just telling you these things. These are facts. How many follow what I'm saying? Some believers believe that, I mean, they may have had a supernatural experience with, with God, but they would come back and they question, were they saved? So the person themselves did not know they were saved. Well, you need to know that you are saved. You're saved from the wrath to come. You're saved from hell. That's something to rejoice in is that you're a child of God, you're saved. You don't have to be in, you won't be in the wrath to come. That's good news. That's what gospel is, good news. And here it is in a nutshell in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. New creation. The Lord says this is a year of new things for us. New things, new things. Before they spring forth in our lives, he will speak out these new things. New things. Hallelujah. New means new. There's a difference between a new car and a secondhand car. You may get a secondhand car. It's new to you, but it's not new. Because someone else had it. Are you all following what I'm saying? But when you have a new car, you open the door and you start sniffing. Because it has a nice new car smell. Can you say amen? A new car feeling. You have to break it in. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Well, you're a new person now. If you are in Christ, you are a new person. That old you is gone. Okay? Sometimes you stay that old you with your family. <laughs> Hello. They always look at you. If they're not saved, they don't have knowledge of the word of God. They look at you from their perspective. And their perspective is, oh, that's you the same old, you the same old. Say, no, 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 no. You're not the same old. Amen. You are new. And it says, therefore, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold. Behold is a good word. It means look, see, comprehend, understand. All of that is in that particular word. That what? All things have become new. All things about you and I are new. When we receive Christ, guess what? We go in a new direction. When we follow Christ, we go in new directions. Turn to the person right there and say, Jesus raised me from the dead. Then I know you all are alive in here this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And out there in Zoom land too. Amen. <laughs> new is new. And then it says here, oh, this is good news. This is the gospel in a nutshell. And this is where you need to go over this, over this, over this, over this. It says, now all things are of God. That's talking about your inner man. All things are of God. You may not act like it. You may not talk like it. You may not look like it. You may not think like it. But it is the truth. All things about you now are of God. You are of God. When people called you a devil before, don't let them call you a devil now. No, that's not me. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> but not now. I am of God. That's talking about my inner man. Can you say amen? And you know, you have to tell people that. They may have been, you devil, you. No, I'm not. <laughs> you don't receive that. <laughs> You're of God. Can you say amen? And then it goes on and tells us here, now all things of God who has reconciled us to himself. Underline the word reconciled. The gospel is called the gospel of peace. Reconciled means everything is all right between God and us. I don't have to be afraid of God hammering me. 
reconciled. Everything is all right. God, he reconciled me and you to himself through Jesus Christ. That's why it's so good to understand you and I have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Not what we've done, but what he's done. You know, we say that over and over again. But people continually try to work. <laughs> or do works to make themselves right with God. I mean, everyone knows mostly Romans 3.23, all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. Okay? They don't know the next verse in Romans 3.24, that we've been justified freely by his grace. Justified means everything has been made all right. Okay, it's good news to tell a person, God's not your enemy. You just have to tell them in plain words that they need to understand. God is not your enemy. You've been reconciled to God. You've been brought back to God. Everything is all right between you and God. Generally, sometimes you hear it preach, not everyone in here is right with God. I based that on what I had done or what I was doing. What I was doing was not of God, but I am right with God because of Jesus Christ. Did you get that? You get an understanding of that. Can you say amen? And generally when I would hear that, when I did start going to church, oh, some of us in here, we're not right with God. I'd come up and get saved all over again. And in those days, I had no knowledge of the word of God. I'd at least get saved 24, 25 times. <laughs> All over again. What I'm doing, understand that. What I'm doing is not of God. But I am right with God, reconciled to God because of what Jesus has done for me. You get that. Are you all follow what I'm, what I'm saying? What I have to do is I have to change my behavior by putting on the new man, which after God is created in true righteousness and true holiness. And submit myself to God, submit myself to be discipled so that I will learn how to walk in righteousness and I will learn how to walk in holiness. See, if you don't believe you're right with God, that's going to be a great hindrance to your faith. Great hindrance. You don't even believe that God will answer your prayers. And you have some Christians preaching, God put the COVID on you. <laughs> no, God didn't put the COVID on you. Are you all hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying this morning? You got to get all that religious junk out of your mind. See, religion comes from man. Actually, it comes from the devil. And man has accepted it. Because with religion, you're never right. You're never clean enough. Always something that you got to do to make yourself clean. Hello. You all hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? I that. It's you trying to make yourself right by doing things your way. Boy, you all got quiet on me. Turn to the person right and left and say, well, none of us do that in here. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go on here. And then it goes on and it says, praise God. It says, that reconciling the world to himself, well, not just a minute, let's go back to 18. Now, all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, underline through. It's through Jesus Christ. It's through Jesus Christ that we're reconciled. It is through Jesus Christ that we're saved. It is through Jesus Christ that we have the forgiveness of sins. It is all through Jesus Christ. He is the Lamb of God who take, taketh away the sin of the world. And that sin of the world was Adam's sin. Okay? 
Glory be to God. And then it says here, it has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Now, notice has given us the ministry of reconciliation. When you're going out on the streets, you're giving people some good news. You're, he's given you a ministry to bring people back to him. Tell them God is not holding anything against you. The only thing you have to do to get right with God is receive his son. Amen. You're reconciled to God. Very simple. Keep it simple. Amen. See, sometimes I, I overhear people sharing with people. And when I hear them, sometimes my head goes spinning. Because <laughs> they make things so complicated. If you just go by what the word says. That's why I say study this. Know this. Can you say Amen. Glory be to God. Some places, if you don't cry, you're not saved. <laughs> I'm just telling you these things. Got to cry. <laughs> you got to holler. <laughs> no. Comes through Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Let's go on. Praise God forevermore. And notice what it says here in verse 19. Now, I love verse 19. I love all of this because it's good news. It says, that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. And the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the father. Full of grace and full of truth. Grace and truth go together. Full of grace and full of truth. Full of grace and full of truth. You have a lot of people who are emphasizing grace, but they don't emphasize truth. Those two things go together. Grace and truth. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. There is a hell out there. But you don't have to go. How many follow what I'm saying? It's your choice. Receive Christ and you won't have to go. Just that simple. Let's go on. All right. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. And this is what I like here. It says that his God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them. Underline the word imputing. Imputing. What does that mean? Counting against you. What I have done is not counted against me. Now, generally, people think, this is what I've done. And this is where I'm going to go to hell or I'm not right with God. First of all, the first sin you need to understand is that sin that is passed upon all men because of Adam. Hello. Amen. Keep your finger here. Sometimes we, we don't see that. We think it's what I've done. And when sometimes people give testimonies, they just keep talking about what they've done, what they've done, this, what I've done. And because I've done this, this is where I'm going to go to hell. No. It's because of what that one man did. It passed upon all of mankind. The scripture says, behold, the Lamb of God who took away the sin, the sin of the world. OK. And that sin was committed by Adam. Keep your finger here. Turn to Romans chapter five a moment. Praise God for evermore. Can you say amen? And in my thinking, when I was coming up, I was enjoying the things that I wasn't supposed to do. <laughs> you see, so I was going to wait till I got old. And then I was going to go to church because I thought it was the church that was going to save me. But the church doesn't save me. You have a lot of people who are unsaved sitting in church. You even have some in the pulpit. Hello, you all still out there. I'm just telling you reality. I uh, see things. The devil has twisted things so much. He has the pe people believing the wrong thing. 
Okay. Romans chapter five. And notice it says here in verse 12, very important scripture to know. It says, therefore, just as through one man, sin entered the world through one man, sin entered the world. That man was Adam. There was no sin in the world when God created Adam. And when he created Eve, there was no sin in the world. That's hard for us to even comprehend because we're born in a world of sin. The course of this world is negative. That's why certain things happen. Are you all still out there? Amen. Amen. And notice it says, and death through sin. There was no death on this planet when God created this planet and put man in charge of this planet. There was no death, no sickness, no sorrow, no disease, no discomfort. But when Adam committed that sin, all of that entered this world. And physical death entered this world as well as spiritual death. See, there's two types of death. There's physical death and there's spiritual death. Spiritual death is separation from God. Are you all still out there? Amen. And notice it says, and thus death spread to all men because all sinned. All sin, all sin, the whole world. Okay, now, Jesus is the Lamb of God who bore the sin of the world, number one, and he also bore our sins, our sicknesses, our disease, our poverty, our griefs, our sorrow. When you Read Isaiah 53, and you look at Isaiah 53, you see the, a, a man of sorrows. That was Jesus. And that's why the Bible says, by his stripes we are healed. That he cleanses us from all sins. That's good news. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? And this is where we're, it, over in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I'm going to go back there, is God is not counting their trespasses to them. In other words, he's not holding anything against you. When you get into heaven and that angel hits the computer and your name comes up, <laughs> And it will say, cleansed. Hallelujah. Not counting anything against you. Because of what a person has done, that's why some believers believe you won't be blessed. God's not counting anything against you, but you count against yourself. Believe in the lie of the devil. Or God's withholding this blessing from you. Oh, uh, he's putting this sickness and disease on you to make you humble so you'll go to church. Many people believe all that kind of mess. Oh, you all find, oh, God's not going to answer my prayer. He's not going to hear my prayer. No, that's not the word of God. Amen. Can you say amen? And this is good news to people. Though. God's not holding anything against you, but you don't know what I've done. I say, I don't care what you've done. I'm just telling you what God says. Amen. He's not holding anything against you. The hardest thing is for you and I to forgive ourselves. Woo. That's the hardest thing. Because the devil will come and sit on our shoulder, on top of our head, and continually reminding us over and over and over and over and over and over what we should have done. See, now, if you need healing in your body, that's one of the greatest hindrances in, in receiving your healing is because 
you are still in guilt and condemnation to yourself. You have to forgive yourself. God already forgives you. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. And you are worthy to be healed. Amen. That's one of the things you have to know. I share uh, Sister Connie Ong's, Pastor Connie Ong's testimony. She had cancer. And she and her husband, they planted a church in Ghana. They planted churches in Ghana, J Ghana Japan, and throughout the world. And she was hit with cancer. And she had... Her father and mother are very, very, very famous uh, pastors and ministers of the gospel. And they had gone to different meetings and boy, the anointing of God came upon her. And when the anointing of God came upon her, she knew it was God. The doctor told her, don't you go back to Ghana, you'll die. And then the doctor told her, I'm going to tell your pastor not to send you back. You know, she said, well, the pastor is my father, and he'll just say, you're healed in Jesus' name, go. <laughs> so she went back to Ghana. She was weak. She still had the cancer. She still had the pain. And she went one particular meeting, and boy, God just really poured out upon her. But she was not totally had her manifestation. This is where you have to understand waiting on the Lord. This is a very, very important truth is waiting on the Lord and knowing how to wait on the Lord because we have to wait on the Lord to fulfill what he says he's going to do. And in God's eyes, in God's mind, it's already fulfilled. We just have to learn to get in agreement with that. So she said from that day forth, she never got better or she never got worse. So she cried unto the Lord. She said, Lord, you touch me. I know you touch me. Why didn't I get the manifestation of my healing? And the Lord spoke to her. And the Lord says, you don't believe you're worthy to be healed. Unworthiness is a great hindrance to faith and patience. Because you have to understand two things. And this was, involves uh, waiting on the Lord a moment. Keep your finger here a moment. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. Praise God for evermore. Can you say amen? amen. Hebrews chapter 6. Hallelujah. And let's look at verse 11. Hebrews 6, verse 11. Okay. And it says, And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence. Underline the word diligence. Diligence is the key. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Be diligent to pray. Come to service. Come to prayer. Be diligent to go get souls saved. Diligence is the key. Can you say amen? To the full assurance of hope unto the end. That you may not become sluggish. Underline sluggish. Uh, another word for sluggishness is called laziness. Sometimes Christians get lazy. Turn to the person to write and they say, nobody in here is like that. <laughs> or out there is like that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, and the devil will try to help you in that area. You don't feel like going to church. You don't feel like praying. You know, it's a blessing to have Zoom, but some people get Zoomed out. They get zoomed out on their couch and they don't want to come for anything. Let me just lay back here on this couch, <laughs> sip my drink, get my chips, and I'll just watch what they're doing and la 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 la, chomp chomp, la 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 la, chomp chomp, goop goop. Are you all still out there? 
Amen. And they get to a point where they don't want to do anything. Okay? Sometimes people get spiritually lazy. Been getting up every morning, praying, seeking the Lord, and then they get away from that. Oh, I think the Lord wanted me to get a little extra sleep this morning. Even while you're praying, the devil's telling you to, 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 to stop. You need to get some rest. Hello. Are you all still out there? Now, see, I'm trying to be nice today, but God is bringing these kind of things up. Can you say amen? And this happens to people. This happens to people. They develop a good prayer life, a good word life. And then the devil comes along and he encourages them to be sluggish or lazy. Hello. Are you all hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? Say, so this is where you have to learn to push through. Amen. You pray with those feelings of being lazy Amen. till you break it. Amen. You force yourself to do it. Amen. Are you all hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? Just telling you. You force yourself to come to church. Amen. See? Devil doesn't want you to come to church, doesn't want you to fellowship. Yeah. One of the things that I have seen in great importance during this time is, yes, we have Zoom. We've been in. But one of the things that is missing is fellowship yeah. because you get you get encouragement, exhortation and comfort through fellowship. Fellowship strengthens you. Hello. Are you all hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? It strengthens you. You need that fellowship. The Bible tells us that in the Word of God. Glory be to God forevermore. Hallelujah. Let's go on. That you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Waiting on the Lord the manifestation of whatever area you're believing God for comes through faith and patience. Faith and patience. You and I inherit that promise. How many in here you're waiting for certain promises to be fulfilled in your life? Raise your hand. That's right. No, oh, you believe it. Faith has done its job. This is where you and I must let patience have her perfect work. Faith and patience we inherit. That involves waiting on God. Okay? And one of the things that the devil tries to do is to cause us to have anxiety. When you're going to do it? 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 And then people fall into that sluggishness because it's not fast enough. Boy, you all got quiet on me out there. Hello, everybody. Remember, through faith and patience, we inherit the promises. Faith and patience. We talked about patience last week in the area of waiting on the Lord. Okay. And Waiting on the Lord, patience means we abide up under that promise. We hold on to that promise. How do I hold on to a promise? Number one, I think it, I speak it, and I see it. Whatever that promise is. I fight for it. What do you mean you fight for it? Is when the devil is trying to bring to my mind, forget it, it's not going to happen. You fight the good fight of faith. You cast down that imagination. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, because what God says is true. Are you all still out there with me? Amen. Amen. What God says is true. Hallelujah. God says you're going to preach and sing the gospel all over the world. Yep. But you haven't gone anywhere yet. I don't care. God said it. Amen. I believe it. And he's going to fulfill it. Amen. The fulfilling of it is waiting on the Lord Amen. to
to fulfill it. You know, there's a scripture, and I see this all over the world, especially in ministries with pastors, because generally pastors want a big church, you see? And everything is for the big church, big church, big church, big church. But God tells us, if the watchman, hello, do you know that scripture? You heard that scripture before? Yes. Hallelujah. Unless the Lord builds the house, the watchman labors in vain. There's a truth there. Unless the Lord builds it. Unless the Lord builds it. Unless the Lord builds it. We just follow what the Lord says to do. Notice I said follow. Because sometimes our labor can be in vain. We can have all the best intentions. It can be from God. But we go to do it out of our own mind and own understanding. Are you all still out there? Amen. We've seen it over the years. We've just seen it over the years with so many people over the years. They go about doing it out of their own mind and out of their own understanding. I have seen people over the years, they're so on fire for God. So on fire for God. I remember when I first started out, one of my particular pastors, Pastor Frank Stewart, and boy, he could see I was on fire. He could see I was on fire, but he didn't have faith on me being on fire. Because he has said, I've seen too many of them over the years on fire, and the fire fizzled. And I said, I'm not going to fizzle. I'm going to get hotter and hotter. <laughs> but as a leader, that was discouraging. Because he would see them all on fire, on fire, on fire, on fire. And the fire just went psh. And I see him now. I'm still going. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? See, you have to maintain the fire. The Lord will help you maintain that fire. But you'll see people. So on fire. Every time the church doors open, they're there. They're praying. But then when something happens. See, when something happens, this is when you push in more. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Amen. Yes. And what he was seeing is what many leaders have seen. People on fire and the fire did not stay lit. That's what the Bible says. But one of the worst ones, I'd rather have you hot or cold than being lukewarm. Amen. And lukewarm is half Heartedly doing whatever it is. You have no feeling. You get into complacency. Never get into spiritual complacency. This is where you have to understand waiting on the Lord. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? Waiting on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord. Go back to Mark chapter 16. So we know it's through faith and in patience. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Lukewarm is complacency. Mm. Then when a person is lukewarm, doubt comes in. Fear comes in. Half-heartedly believe in God. People get afraid to believe God. Turn to the person right and left and say, nobody in here is like that. And can Brother Richard please adjust the, the, heat, the air conditioning in here? For you all who are cold, stand up and jump up and down a few times and that'll get you guys warm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's look at this. Can you say amen? Yeah, amen? Hallelujah. Mark chapter 16, we're talking about what we do. What we do. Can you say amen? amen. Well, you go, 
you preach the gospel. Mark chapter 16. Let's go over here a minute. Mark chapter 16, 15. Go into the gospel. I mean, go into the world and preach the gospel. Number two, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. But notice verse 17. It says, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they should cast out demons. Now, that's for every believer to cast out demons in Jesus' name. Okay? Become more spiritually alert. Because there's a whole lot of demons out here in the world. <laughs> whole lot of them. When you see the devil acting up, cast him out in Jesus' name. If he's in your home, among your own family, cast him out in Jesus' name. Because as I've told you all before, you can have spirits come into your home and you be not even aware of it. I'm talking about demon, demonic spirits. They sometimes will change the behavior of your children or people who are in your home. You go to a hospital, bind and break the power of every spirit of infirmity, sickness and disease, so it will not attach itself to you. Because demons will try to attach itself to a person. Remember one time coming back from India. We come back from India, we had tremendous crusades, so many different miracles. And I was going through LAX, and all of a sudden this demon came, and he wanted to try to get into me. God opened up my eyes, I saw in the realm of the spirit. And the thing came up to me, and I said, in Jesus' name, go from me. Here's an example of demons trying to attach themselves to you. Sometimes when you go to hospitals, someone dies and the demons come out of the people and they look for a new body to inhabit. Now, don't stop going to hospitals praying for people. <laughs> Telling you how to handle it, what to do. Can you say amen? <laughs> <laughs> this is what you do. Amen. Before you go in there, you bind and break the power of, of every foul, unclean spirit so it will not attach itself to you in Jesus' name. Oh, I'm not going to the hospital no more. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. I'm telling you reality. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? Amen. And Sometimes the Lord opens up your eye, you can see the spirit come out of the person's body seeking to go to another place. These are facts. You all sit out there. That's why the Bible says be alert. Be alert. Be spiritually alert. Can you say amen? You can go into a house where people are totally depressed and it will try to attach itself to you and you'll be depressed and don't know why you're depressed. Okay? Well, you sense that spirit of depression, bind and break the power of the spirits of depression. Command you go right now in Jesus' name. Amen. I told you one particular time I was in a hotel up on the 54th store, story, 54th floor, and I went by the window and looked down, and the devil told me to jump. I said, you jump, devil, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I kill myself. <laughs> I'm just telling, this is a reality. Are you all following what I'm saying? And I'm just telling you what to do, how, how you do it. You got the name of Jesus. No name named above that name. In heaven, earth, under the earth, every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can go to people's house. You and your wife have a wonderful relationship. Lovey-dovey. And then when you get in the car, you start fighting like 
boxers. Well, there's a spirit of strife that was in that home. You commanded to go in Jesus' name. Don't attach itself to you. I'm just telling you what to do, how to do it. Can you say amen? Sometimes we, we are somewhere else. There's spiritual reality. Time to go to church. Peaceful before you go to church. You get in the car to go to church. Woo, woo, woo. How? Woo, woo, woo. Ha, ha. <laughs> Saying you know like cats and dogs. And then you get out your car. Praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> These things are for real. Yes. Right. Glory be to God. You're going to have some places they don't even believe anything is there. So the devil already got them. Yes. Are you all hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? Yes. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Okay, we're talking about waiting on the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. As I said, waiting is not laying down, just, just relaxing. <laughs> Let's go on. Here we go. It says here, preach the gospel. Cast out devils in my name to lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. If they drink any deadly thing, it won't harm them. Now, don't go around drinking stuff. But accidentally, you claim it like Paul did when he got bit by the serpent. But praying for the sick. You know, some Christians now are afraid to pray for sick people because they might get covertized. I'm just telling you true. And then they believe if they pray, nothing's going to happen. That's doubt. Are you all hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? No, pray for the sick. You can speak the word only. And in Jesus' name, command someone to be healed. Amen. Boy, you all got quiet on me out there. Amen. That is, you can, you can sense it. It's in the realm of the spirit. It's strong. A strong spirit of doubt is over this nation. Yeah. Not only this nation, but other nations. For believers, where they're afraid to pray for the sick and to cast out devils. Do that work of Jesus Christ. You know, one of the things you find out, hospitals, medical is big business. Big business. So there's not a lack of what you call patience. A lot of people need healing. And you don't have to be what you call a super spiritual person to see someone in pain. That opens the door for you to pray for them. Yeah. Are you all following what I'm saying? That opens the door for people in your family. Pray for them. Pray for the sick and they shall recover. Brother Barnabas was telling me about, was it last week that we went over to the Korean church, and it was a lady, she'd, she had pain or whatever it was, and she got healed. People responded for healing. Okay, so do those things. Then go back to your morning prayer. Hello. Amen. Amen. Oh, you don't know that bed feels so nice. <laughs> oh, it just kind of, mm, just kind of encompass me. No, go back to your morning prayer, praise, worship, and getting into the scriptures. Okay. Even if you have to pick up your Bible and you find out in 10 minutes that your nose is in the Bible. <laughs> There's no wasted time with your Bible. Amen. Declare the word throughout the day. 
See, all of this is a part of waiting. Can you say amen? amen. Getting instructions from God. Most of all, humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God that he will exalt you in due time. Because he has to train us. We get training in church and things of that particular nature, but then there's training that the Holy Ghost is going to show you certain things. How many follow what I'm saying? Talk with God just like you talk with, with, with someone. Holy Ghost is always willing to talk with you. That's the part of waiting. Can you say amen? And this is where through faith and patience, we inherit the promises. I've been in ministry now over 40, what, four years now. I am still learning. And I'm learning that I can teach people the same thing 10,000 times, but they haven't got it yet. <laughs> I'm just telling you truth. Are you all following what I'm saying? And that's why there's teaching, training, and activation. You see, people are taught, but people have to be trained. When it's trained, it becomes a part of you. Automatically. How many in here have been potty trained? Raise your hand. <laughs> nobody, has to, nobody has to instruct you what to do. You know what it, you ought to do when it's time to go. It's a part of you. Can you say amen? That's the same thing with the word of God. Hallelujah. You don't take it for granted. You don't say, oh, I know this. I know that. I know this. I want something deeper. Nope. You don't do that. It becomes a part of you. And then there's activation. God trains you in activation. You heard Pastor John giving you scriptures on he who wins souls is wise. Amen. You have to learn how to win souls. Amen. And it comes by doing activation. Amen. You know, when I first kind of started out in ministry, I would give an altar call. This would be in crusade meetings and things of that particular nature. And I would use what I heard. Okay, what I heard is every eye closed, <laughs> every head bowed, you know, and I would speak what the word said, etc., etc. But only a few people would come up. So I said, Lord, what's wrong here? Okay, because that's all I ever heard. I heard every eye closed, every knee bowed. They do that here in the States. Okay? But I'm in the field. I'm in the nations of the world now. The Lord says, stop saying that. Don't do it anymore. He said, here in Asia, Africa, Central America, South America, people are more family-oriented. And in some particular places, to come up to be a Christian, they have to leave their family. And in some places, their family will throw them out. God says, don't do that anymore. Just start out and say, anybody here, you don't speak in tongues, raise your hand. <laughs> start with the Holy Ghost. Okay, you don't speak in tongues, you don't know what tongues are, come forth. Okay, then... Have you received Jesus? If you haven't received Jesus, come on up and receive Jesus. He who receives the Son receives life. I give some scripture in there, you know. Some of you who don't know you're saved, or if you're going to heaven, come on up here. And we would have tremendous harvests of souls. Tremendous harvests of souls. Now, some Preachers did not like how I did that. Well, you should have gave them an opportunity to receive 
Jesus. I said, they get an opportunity to receive Jesus. I just wanted to, just to show you something here. Can you say amen? The Holy Spirit told me years ago, I will make you a great fisher of men. Amen. That's what he told me. I will make you a great fisher of men. He spoke to that to me in 1980, that he would make me a great fisher of men. And he started showing me how to fish. Can you say amen? amen? And if you know anything about fishing, if you have a net and you throw your net out and you bring the net in, you have all kind of fish in that net. And what you have to do is separate those fish. Those fish that need salvation, you got them. Those that need to be the Holy Ghost, you got them. Those who are not sure they're saved, you got them. And so when people would come forth, now just think about that. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Come to the front. <laughs> Hello. I'm not going up there in front of all those people. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? We would have the altar. We would have it just packed with people. A great harvest of soul. God teaching me how to fish. And then we would pray the prayer. And generally, in most cases, we had interpretation in two to three languages. We've done interpretation before doing the altar call for five to six languages all at one time. And the Holy Ghost fell and everybody spoke in tongues. <laughs> what the Lord was showing me is that gave people the feeling in the believing that they were coming into a family. That they, uh, they, if they have to leave their family, don't worry, I got a family now of, with God. Amen. See, God would teach you how to be more effective out there on those streets. Amen. How many follow what I'm saying? He'll teach you how to minister to people Amen. out there on the streets. He'll teach you how to get people healed. That's all the Holy Ghost teaching you that. And you can, and you can know that. You know why? Because you got the Holy Ghost in you. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we just let God be God. Let him teach you. Now, I just thought the Holy Ghost reminded me of that is to share that with you. Fishing. Fishing. You're a fisher of men. Yes. See, you, you can have a hook a little lead, and you can have a little stopper, I don't know what they call them now, and you can throw it in the water, you only catch one fish. But when you throw out your net, you get all kind of fishes, all kind of fishes. Can you say amen? And you have a great harvest, just like when Jesus appeared to them and said, throw down your nets for a catch. Not you might have a catch, but throw it down on the right side of the boat for a catch. And boy, the nets were breaking. Can you say amen? God will show you how to approach people. He'll show you everything you need to know. Amen? Did you all get something out of that? Let's give Jesus all praise, honor, and glory. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. I thank you that the Lord is good. We want to receive our...